Oh, hello, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing amazing. I'm currently sitting outside on the porch right now, just like looking out at blue skies because the past 48 hours here in Florida has been nothing but gray skies and rain. There is not one single cloud in the sky today. I see a hawk flying. I was out there earlier with our dogs and I just kept seeing like the hawk shadow fly across the yard. I'm like, try it, bitch. Try it, bitch, because we're gonna be having hawk stew as i was scrolling over on twitter this morning i came across this conversation of people like debating if aliens are real or if we're the only ones that are in this universe and i have to say i'm not really surprised by a lot of the answers that i saw because a lot of people are saying well no i don't believe in any of them because i believe in god and that's just like the end all be all right there which is very similar to like what my parents said like i asked my mom like a while ago like before she passed away like do you believe in aliens and she told me that she believed in the god and he's gonna take care of everything never really gave me an answer on it but i asked my dad like a few weeks ago like what he thought of it and I got the same answer like they believe what they've been told from the bible and they believe in god so therefore not really not so much and in my opinion this is just my opinion let me know what you guys think down below I think it's kind of like crazy to feel like we are the only like living things in this universe like right with all of the galaxies with all of the planets with like just everything that is out there like you really believe that we are the only things that are living and breathing and that just made me think of something because a lot of you don't know maybe some of you do i've said this before on this channel but it was like such a long time ago but i just thought of it right now i used to go to christian academy like i grew up in the church like from the early years and when i finally got kicked out of christian academy was in sixth grade and i'm talking about not just like they enrolled me in some school like i had to go to awanas i had to go to sunday school i had to go to church on wednesdays like i had to do all of this stuff i played the violin I did take violin lessons. I was one of those kids though, and it definitely does not happen to me as an adult, but, and I'm glad that I grew out of it, but I was one of those kids where if somebody made fun of me for doing something, then I would stop doing it. Like, let's talk about violin. I was very into playing the violin. Somebody made fun of me in my class for doing it. I quit. Then I took up tap dancing lessons because I loved the Lord of the Dance. I loved Michael Flatley. I loved River Dance, And I was actually really good at tap dancing, and it was something that I really did enjoy doing. Like, if I would've stuck with it, guys, I could've been the next Michael Flatley dancing across PBS. But I was good at it. I did a few classes and they bumped me up to the intermediate classes which was very very mm, I I did not feel like I fit in right there because in the intermediate classes I was like a kid like very young I'm talking this is probably like around fifth grade that I was doing this so I was young I was in that class with all adults so it was very awkward for me trying to do all this with these I'm like this tall and they're all like up here it was it was weird. But the reason why I quit tap dancing, and I actually remember it to this day, having the conversation with my mom, because she picked myself and my brother up from school, and she was like, we have to go home, you have to get dressed, you have to get ready, you have to go to class, meaning tap dancing class. And I said to her, I was in the front seat of the car, and I said to her, I was like, you know, I just don't feel like I want to do that anymore. Like, I don't think it's cool. Like, like typical things a child would say. I wish that my mom would have, like, dug into it more. Like, why are you not wanting to do it anymore? Like, did someone say something to you? But she was just like, okay, you don't want to do it. We're not going to do it. You know what? I should go get some tap shoes. I should dust off these knees and I should get down. But getting back to the Christian Academy, myself as well as my brother were asked not to come back to the school after, like, a while. My grandparents paid for this. But the reason that I was asked not to come back, and this happened on the same day. My brother was always getting into trouble, always having to go into detention and, like, ISS. So they didn't want him in the Christian Academy. And trust me, my brother did not want to be at the Christian Academy either. And when I was in the younger years of school, I was very like on top of things. I did my homework. I wanted to have like the best projects. My mom would help me with my projects sometimes. Not do the work, but she had better handwriting than I would. I would do all the work and I would have it all laid out and she would put things like on the poster board for me. Well, I was extremely sick for a few weeks during the school year and I had a project due. So I did all the work. I was sitting at home. I had nothing else to do at this time, girl. We didn't have the internet or anything like that. So I was sitting at home doing all my schoolwork still while being sick and putting everything onto this poster board getting it done my mom wrote a little bit on that poster board in her handwriting and they gave me an f and disqualified me on that project so this is honestly like one of the first outbursts that i feel like i ever had in my life i was not having it they wanted to put me in detention and i swear to god as soon as they gave me that f and disqualified me on that project that is when there was like a switch in me and i was like you know what i've been like sweet i've been innocent all this time no more bitch so i got put into detention and at the christian academy what you had to do is you had to write an essay as to what you did why you did it and why you're not going to do it again and how you're going to fix the situation now personally for me i didn't feel like i did anything wrong to receive a f on a project and get disqualified completely if you want to take a few points off because my mom wrote something on the poster board okay fine that's fine i didn't think i did anything wrong so i in sixth grade wrote an essay front and back on the paper like they asked me to do not about what I did, why I did it, and why I won't do it again, and how I'm gonna fix the situation. I wrote my front and back page essay in sixth grade on how the pastor of the church, Gene, I still remember you, Gene, getting excommunicated from the 
in church, having to leave and not even be welcome back. And I just want to say, maybe I had something to do with that in sixth grade in my little innocent self because my front and back essay was how the pastor was screwing the organist, okay? Now, I got it wrong because my front and back essay was about how the pastor was screwing the organist. Now, <laughs> I did get it wrong. I did get it wrong because it wasn't the organist. It was actually his secretary. So the pastor was having an affair. I just got the person wrong. Crazy, right? In sixth grade, you knew that? So I remember getting pulled into the office with my mom, and my brother was there, of course, and I <laughs> literally remember them asking, please, we do not want your children to come back to this school. And my grandparents were not happy about this because if there was one thing that my grandparents loved on my dad's side, that was the Lord. And that was the Lord. And they wanted their grandchildren to go to that Christian academy probably up until we graduated. And thank God, thank God that we got out of there because I don't know if I could do those uniforms anymore. Those uniforms that they put on those kids to go to school are so scratchy and so uncomfortable. I hope that they've gotten a higher quality yarn to put that shit together because... Oh, and the khakis, when you, oh my God, people that wear fucking khaki, the khakis that they make kids wear, and sometimes they're a cargo, I just don't, uniforms for school are so horrible, because you're already going to spend eight hours at school, and do all that schoolwork, pay attention and all that, why are parents wanting their children to be uncomfortable during that time? Like, I'm not saying that your kid wear whatever the fuck your kid wants to wear, but khakis that look like you took a whole can of starch and and sprayed it on there? I think the f*** not. So I'm not exactly sure what is going on with my camera. It looks like there's like a little bit of a lag in the monitor down here. So I'm sorry if it's like glitching right now on the screen. But the last thing that I want to talk about is this TikTok that I came across from Jill Zarin. And if you're not familiar with Jill Zarin, she used to be on The Real Housewives of New York City. Well, I have never seen a TikTok from Jill Zarin before. So this is my first introduction to her on social media. She made a TikTok and she was telling everyone she wanted to warn everyone, if you will, that there is a big rash of crime going on in Boca Raton, Florida, and two of her cars were stolen out of her driveway during the middle of the night. Hey guys, listen, I've been um, reluctant because I didn't want to uh, affect the investigation, but both of our cars were stolen in, on my driveway in a private, gated, secure community in Boca Raton, Florida. There is a rash of robberies by very bold um, people. Uh, that I saw a camera, they were men in this case, um, come at two o'clock in the morning. My house, number one, was dark, and I am now lighting the outside of my house, um, the landscape lighting now until 5 a.m. I suggest you do the same if you are locked. And the reason why I say that is because the thieves know just by driving by. So I learned that the windows, or the side windows, go in when you lock the car. So thieves go around parking lots and everywhere looking for cars that have the windows open. They know the car is unlocked and it's likely that the keys are in the car or they have a better shot at it. In my case, they did, they were right. Um, I will never do that again. I will also have cameras around my house. I'm going today to either, you know, Lowe's, Best Buy, Home Depot, wherever I can get the um, best system I can get. If anyone has any advice for me, please let me know. Um, anyway, I just want you guys to be aware of what's going on, even in the most safest, what I thought was the safest gated community in and anywhere, living like, okay, so thieves did get into our community in spite of all the security that we have. They did steal my cars at two o'clock in the morning, both of them. Boy, is that bold. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, that's a little weird. How would they be able to steal two cars without anybody hearing anything or seeing anything? So there's a few things about this story that I'm just like, kind of like red flag about, like, Ugh, what are you doing? She said that she keeps her house like completely dark at night. Number one, bad idea. I am somebody, I love up lighting. I love my cameras. I just love everything to be bright at night. So if you're going to try to get in here, bitch, people are going to see you trying to get in this fucking house. But not just that she keeps her house dark. And this is honestly like how out of touch like rich people are. Just many people are with the reality that we're living in. Crime rates are up in every single place in this fucking country, okay? You can live in like one of the nicest places in the country and there's still a risk that you're going to get robbed. There actually might be even more of a risk now. God, with the and inflation and how times are tough for everyone out here, girl. So on top of people not wanting to light their houses up at night, okay, your prerogative, that's what you want to do, you want to do, not for me. But she said that in her driveway, both of her cars were left unlocked with the keys inside. With the, f it's like, hello, hi, you might as well just put a fucking blinking sign above it. Like, hey, gas just got filled up, fuel's in the car, might as well take it. Like, I wanted to feel bad for her as I was watching this video. I don't think anybody's car should be stolen from them. Poor, rich, whatever. But girl, how are you going to be so dumb? <laughs> like, honestly, you have no lights in your house. Your cars are unlocked and the keys are in them. What else? Did you leave them some money for McDonald's or Taco Bell on the way out of the neighborhood? Like, what the? And honestly, like, leaving the car unlocked in general is just, like, crazy to me. Like, even when we have it in the garage, like, it still locks. I just can't, I can't imagine leaving a key in a car. I used to know somebody that left the keys in the car at all times. And it's just, it's crazy to me. Because then they're in the house, they're like, where's my key? It's in your car.
You literally left it in the car. So moral of this story is, don't be like Joe Zarin and do not leave your cars unlocked and definitely do not leave your keys inside of the car for the robbers to and take it. Because even if your car is locked, I'm just gonna let you guys know, even if your car is locked, but the key is still inside of it somehow, they can still break into the car and take your car. Wow. Wow. So with all that said, everyone, that is it for this video. I hope that you did enjoy it. Please leave a sunshine emoji down below because there are still no clouds in the sky and it is nothing but sun. And I'll see you guys all in my next one. Bye.